join your country, actually. Uh, uh, if I can't have my PowerPoint presentation, because I cannot do anything about my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, there it is. And this is the coverage that we have, by the way. Uh, so, and uh, this is what EPBC is all about. I'd like to start with this passage uh, from scriptures. Paul says, we are co-workers in God's service. I was talking yesterday to one of our broadcasters who is doing uh, two hours of daily broadcast in the morning show, very, very energetic. And um, I, I was talking to him on Skype, and uh, he said, you know what, last, uh, last morning I, I was sitting there before the microphone early in the morning. I had nothing to say. I had nothing to say. And then uh, uh, he said, I sat down, and I just felt the Holy Spirit there. And for two hours, I was encouraging people and giving them faith message. And, and this is what's happening with us. This is how we all feel. We have nothing to share except, except Christ, except when the Holy Spirit gives us something to share. And that's why we so appreciate your support, especially your prayer support. This is, this is just wonderful for us. Great worship here, great church. I feel right at home. Um, I thought I would feel even more at home if uh, all of you guys uh, were speaking Russian. So uh, I'll, I'll teach you how to speak Russian. How about it? Uh, you know, some of you know words like net, which is a negative kind of word. We know, no, we don't want to, to do that. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do faith. How about faith? Uh, it sounds like Vera in Russian. Can we say it together? Vera. Vera. You're doing, you're almost there. You're doing good, but you have to pronounce those R's, you know, go like Vera. Let's do it again. Vera. Vera. Wonderful. I feel right at home. So uh, usually when, when, when we speak at uh, some of these functions we had uh, in Australia, uh, we, we have a trivia uh, questions, and I just left one for this church. Uh, how much do you think it costs to have a year-long radio conversation with one non-Christian listener in, in Russia or Ukraine? How much does it cost to have this uh, radio going uh, into one bedroom, into, into one home in Moscow or Ukraine? Give me your idea. You know, just anything. Just what, what do you think? How, how much is it? How effective is radio? Just give me a number. Come on, I'm just standing there. <laughs> hundred dollars. No, no, it's much lower. I would never be in radio if it uh, would have costed 15. No, no, it's much lower. It's much lower. It's actually 50 cents. It costs us 50 cents to have this heart-to-heart -heart conversation with one listener in, in, in Russia or Ukraine. That's why uh, I'm in radio, because it is very, very effective. It is cost-effective. So uh, when, when you decide to support us, and, and I think maybe God is talking to you. You know, I, I found out. I, I, seriously, I never say this in, in my life. I never raise money. I just thank people for, for what they do. Um, but I discovered that uh, very few people actually want to support radio. It is a specific kind of ministry. But if God is talking to you about, uh, about supporting radio, if you understand the power of radio, then, then you must support, maybe not even FBC, but you have to support media if God is calling you to do that. Uh, so uh, we, uh, many of you have heard about Ukraine. Uh, it's a country, uh, I know not many Australians know even about it, but it's a country kind of uh, west of Russia, and uh, that's where the plane went down uh, about a year ago. And uh, I know that uh, many Australians died in that plane. And the war is going on there. And God let us open the station right, right in the city where this conflict began, about a year before it started. And we did not know what, why God chose that specific city, but, but he did. And a year later, um, rebels came in and the station was robbed, uh, destroyed. Uh, they took all the equipment out. Um, we were off for several months, and, um, and then uh, we finally rebuilt the station. Uh, the tower went down, but we put our antennas on a, on a small water tower on, on a hill. And those people who are now traumatized by war, they can listen to us, and, and many do, and, and many are becoming Christians. Uh, what you cannot rebuild, of course, is the lives that were lost. And we lost four volunteers there in Ukraine, and one of them, uh, his name is also Victor, and... Uh, probably one of our most joyful broadcasters. He would come, come every Monday and give this inspiring talk to people. And he is, you know, from a non-Christian background, a new Christian, you know, excited for, for the Lord. And, and he, he would be just wonderful with the listeners. And they loved him and was, were calling him. He, he is one of those, uh, one of those guys who, who were basically beaten to death uh, for their Christian witness. 
And uh, I went there and interviewed his, his, his wife. And I let our um, director there, who is also named Victor, too many of us. Uh, and uh, uh, he happens to be blind. But uh, let, let's see this short, short video uh, about this. Но вот этот момент, момент безнадежности, той боли, когда люди хоронят своих людей, своих детей, своих жен. Просто, просто вот летел снаряд, упал, взорвался, и погибли невинные люди. И это все на глазах твоих. Это остается на всю жизнь. были от церкви, и церковь много помогала вот в этом плане для того, чтобы Слово Божье распространяло. Церковь, то есть, активно участвовала. Потом ограбили радиостанцию нашу, и церковь пережила тяжелейшее испытание в вере. Это случилось на Троицу. Их взяли прямо возле церкви, забрали. После этого через месяц уже обнаружили, что они мертвые. У одного диафана трое детей, Виктор Бродарский был замучен практически. Жена его Наталья. Витя любил людей. Ему было, что людям ну, да, вот преподнести верность. Он был очень верным. Очень любил детей и трепетал их за их настоящее и будущее. У Вити было много служений, он все любил. И вообще такая динамичная личность, яркая личность, я, я бы сказал так. Эмоциональная, яркая личность и такая глубокая вера в него. Вы знаете, вот Вити хотел на небо, хотел. Не потому что там кто-то есть, ну, да, вот из людей. Вот я сейчас хочу на нем, потому что там Витя. А он хотел к Богу, к Иисусу Христу, своему Спасителю. Он почти 19 лет. Это богатая, насыщенная жизнь, ну, полное счастье. Были счастливые годы в моей жизни. Я благодарю Бога за него. Даже если бы, мне кажется, если бы я даже знала, что это будет не так долго, я бы ни на кого его не променяла. Ну, первое в моей жизни, это первый раз, чтобы за веру людей убивали. Я даже написал стих на эту тему. Я реально себя ощутила частью тела Христова. И я понимала, что за меня молятся не только здесь. Я знала, что и в Америке, в Германии, в России. Как, ну, как написано в Писании, что страдает, да, вот один член, да, вот и все тело страдает. I just, uh, I just decided to cut the video there. Uh... But, but you, you understand, you, you feel what, what she's saying, right? When we were sitting together and, and, and I was interviewing her, uh, we felt that, that we are one body in Christ. It is, for me, it is a huge, huge privilege to, to uh, have been working with those guys. Uh, we just found out from the rebels who were killing them, and they said, there's something wrong with you uh, people. Uh, we are breaking their bones, we are killing them, we are beating them with sticks, and they are singing your Christian songs. Uh, what's going on with you? It's the body of Christ. 
it's Christ in us. And that's why we feel like one family. Wherever I am, in, in Russia, Ukraine, Australia, uh, we feel that we are together. And God works through us when we are together. When we came to this building with Natalia, uh, we felt double emotions because, uh, of course, they were killed there, my, my brothers. And, you know, there's, there's their blood there. And I also realized that uh, my... My father was held there in, in that building years ago when he was in prison for, for his faith uh, during the Soviet times. And um, it, is, it is such a privilege for me to work with people like that. I remember when I visited my dad uh, long ago in prison in, in Soviet Union then, in deep in Siberia, in highly secured political prison. I, we had a wonderful uh, meeting, conversation. I'll never forget those two, two hours. Uh, but what was interesting, you know, I was uh, talking with my dad and uh, then he started giving me story after story after story of those prisoners becoming, becoming Christians. And he just spent six months there. And I sit there, as I'm 17 years old, I say, that I'll never be able to, to beat that, you know. I mean, you are here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, snow is around you and, and God is bringing people into the kingdom. And, uh, and he said, you know what, son, you, you'll be preaching the gospel to thousands and thousands of people. But before it goes to, to your head, he said, uh, uh, just, just remember that you will be doing this as part of the body of Christ. And true enough, seven years later, I was preaching the gospel on uh, FBC radio. And when you have no training, you're 22 years old, you have no training, you have no experience whatsoever. Somebody just entrusted you this microphone and you speak to it and thousands of young people respond from all over Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, you understand very well that this is not you doing something special. This is God working through his church, through his Holy Spirit. And this is what's been uh, going on since then, since we started um, broadcasting in Russia as, as, it became, as it became a free country. This is, uh, this is part of our team in, in Moscow. We just had a seminar. Uh, most of those people are volunteers, uh, people who are good communicators, people who love Jesus and know how to answer questions. Because we are talk radio. We are just uh, answering uh, questions uh, that, that people actually actually have. We have stations in Moscow, St. Petersburg, uh, we have stations uh, up north and, and down south. So uh, God is blessing us. And we have about a million people who listen to us online. And this is the new technology that is picking up and we'll be doing more and more next year. So uh, pray for us because so many people, so many great testimonies that we receive. About three million people listen to us already, but you know, we need more. We have 250 million people that need to listen to us. And uh, when I travel throughout Russia, uh, and I don't know how, how many, I was told that uh, I, I will be giving a time that kind of counts down. Now it says that I have 10 hours and 54 minutes to, to <laughs> preach, right? Is, is that, is that, how I get, no, no, I'll be done on time. We'll just, you know, I'll just stop. This is how we are in radio, you know, you, uh, uh, you speak and then, you know, you go off the air and you can continue, but nobody will listen to you. <laughs> so uh, so I'll, 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 I'll just stop. You know, I have a bunch of stories to share with you and I want to share as, as much as possible. Uh, back to the story. St. Petersburg, if you travel to Russia, you must stop. This is in St. Pete. This is a very, very beautiful city. Of course, under all that facade, all that, all, all that beauty, there, there are real, real lives and, and real people who hurt. And um, I was there preaching in one of the churches, and uh, you know how it is after the sermon. People, you know, start speaking to you, talking to you, and there's this, you know, music is still going, and this uh, woman comes up to me and, and kind of shakes my hand and says, Victor, thank you for, for what you do. She says, I'm the one who, who wrote to you. And, uh, of course, you know, we receive thousands of letters uh, every month, and, and uh, I said, well, uh, and she said, but I'm the one who wrote to you about my suicide attempt. Then I felt, felt really embarrassed because I still did not know who she was because we received so many of those testimonies. And, and this, she said, oh, I'll, I'll tell the story again. And she said, you know what, um, we had a young family, did not know how to live together. We're fighting every night. And one night, uh, one night my, uh, my husband comes home and says, you know, Vera, this is, this is it. This is it. I cannot, cannot do this anymore. This is divorce time. She said, I just went blank, and uh, I just ran into the kitchen, uh, closed the door, barricaded myself in the kitchen, took the knife to, to, to take my own life. And she said, then I thought about my little girls in the next room, and, and she said, uh, I did not want them to hear what is about to happen. And the only thing I, I, I could do that 
kind of moment of sanity is to go to the radio and, and make the music louder so they would not hear. Uh, and, and then she said, as I did, I heard the voice coming from the radio saying, you have hope in Jesus Christ. You have hope for life in Jesus Christ. And, and I'm standing there and she's you know, sharing her, her life with me and I'm just, just amazed. And, uh, and she says, but thank you so much, not only for saving my life, but thank you for the fact that all four of us, uh, my two little girls and, and my husband uh, and me are in this church and we will live forever because, because of FEBC. And uh, her little girl come, comes up and says, mommy, mommy, let's go, daddy is waiting downstairs. And uh, she shook my hand and I'll never forget that handshake. But then I thought, you know, it doesn't really belong to, to me. It belongs to all of us. It belongs to, to the church. It belong, belongs to, to the people who support the FBC, who pray. I mean, you're praying for, for international missions. This is so great. This is so powerful. Stories like this happen not because somebody says something. It's because the Holy Spirit does his work because of your prayers. And we truly, truly appreciate that. Um, unfortunately, they're trying to close us down in St. Petersburg and... This is the best picture I could find of Mr. Putin, so uh, this was the alternative. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I just had to put it there. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's easy to take a person out of KGB. It's difficult to take KGB out of the person. So, uh, but God can do this. This is one of our broadcasters, and he is um, a former KGB officer, and he's a psychologist, a philosopher. He used to work with cancer patients and then with sports teams, very, very experienced, and, and God is blessing him. Uh, he's the one who, uh, who I was talking in the beginning, and uh, I talked to him uh, yesterday, and I said, well, do you have any, any fresh testimonies? And he gave me like five of this week, amazing testimonies. I'll just share one with you. This is a lady in Kyrgyzstan, in Bishkek, who is listening to his Moscow broadcast. And, and she uh, was, her name is uh, Aziza. She's 19 years old. She says, I'm living in this Muslim environment, and I hear you being on the radio, and you're so free. There's freedom, there's life in you. I don't know what this is, but this Muslim stuff that is not satisfying me. So I want to, to live this life of, of freedom, but my relatives are against me. Uh, and, and at one point she was suicidal, and after talking to Eugene for 30 minutes, she's, she's now hopeful. Uh, pray uh, for Aziza today. As, 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 you, as you go to bed, remember this young lady, but and there are thousands of people like that. Uh, so, uh, my time is almost up, but I have to teach you this. You, you know this one, no? Uh, yellow blue bus, no? Well, look at someone you generally like, uh, you know, don't hate, and, um, and just say this, yellow blue bus. Just trust me, come on people, you're so suspicious, you're Australians. Just, just look at your friend and say, or you can look at me and say, yellow blue bus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love you too. Uh, so <laughs> you just said in Russian that you, uh, you love that person. So that's, uh, that's where we are. Uh, uh, if we have a minute, I'll, I'll share another story. And, and, and this is just, just uh, oh, maybe I will not share this story. I'll, I'll share this uh, story. You know, we are speaking a lot about adoption. And, and God uh, is changing the country because of FEBC message about adoption, because adoption was not popular at all uh, in Russia, but we have about a million kids who need parents, social orphans. And uh, we started talking about adoption and foster care, and the country is changing. Thousands of, of young kids were adopted. I was in Moscow, just stuck in traffic, worse than Sydney, you know? Uh, so I was just, just standing there, and I'm calling my pastor, and this is my good friend. Uh, he, uh, Ruben, he's uh, in Moscow now, moved to Chechnya to, to work there. Uh, and I said, Ruben, maybe I can stop by your place and we can have some tea and wait for the traffic to, to go away. He says, I have a better idea. Why don't you come to, to my, uh, my friend's house, my new friends? They just started coming to, to my church. They'll be so glad to see you. They're right there where you are. So we come to this little apartment and, you know, husband and wife, and they are so welcoming, so, so glad to see us. You know, they open their uh, doors, their hearts. They have Russian cookies there, tea, everything. You know, Russian cookies are the best, by the way. So uh, it is, it is, we're having such a wonderful time. And they are sharing um, with me how they came to know Christ. It's an amazing story. So we're sitting there. They, first wife listened to the radio, and then um, the husband listened to the radio, and they both became Christians, and uh, it's an entire story. Uh, and, and then their daughter comes in. 
uh, Oksana, uh, just, just like my wife's name, and uh, they say, uh, Oksana, say hi to, to Victor. And she says, hi, Victor, you know, a typical teenager. And then uh, they say, uh, well, this is Victor from uh, FEBC. And I see Oksana kind of freezes for a second, and then uh, she just decides to give me a hug, and she hugs me, you know, and, and says, thank you so much, Victor, for what you do. Thank you so much. And, uh, uh, and then she said, I have to leave now. Uh, I, I need to go and get to the youth service. I'm late already, but thanks. And she left, and I talked to the parents. I say, what's, what's going on? You know, why is she hugging me? And they said, oh, the pastor didn't tell you. Uh, of course, we continued to listen to FEBC after we became Christians. And, and they said, you kept talking about adoption and foster care, adoption and foster care, changing kids' life. And we are in our 50s. We could not adopt anymore. But you just went to, to the orphanage to help a little bit. And uh, when we came, uh, we saw Oksana. She was 14. Uh, at 14, nobody adopts. Uh, kids in Russia are that old, and they said we we knew she's she's our daughter. That's why she's she's hugging you. About fifty thousand lives were changed because of this effort. Uh, fifty thousand lives like Oksana, and the alternative for them if they stay there in the orphanage, uh, ten percent of them within the three years after graduating from it will kill themselves. They do not know how how to live normal lives. They did not get what kids should get, uh, love from their parents. And 70% of them become, uh, become uh, of the girls become prostitutes. And 80% of the boys go into the criminal world. Oksana will not become a prostitute. She's serving God in the youth service in Moscow. I will end with that. Thank you so much for praying for missions. Thank you so much for praying for FEBC. We feel your prayers. We see the results of your prayers. I appreciate being here. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you.